So I saw a headline um, recently that kind of blew my mind. It was a New York Post opinion piece called Christians are sick of being punished for their views in America. I love few things in this world more than the sound of my own voice, but for the first time, I was rendered speechless. I stared at the headline for hours, certain that it just couldn't be real, certain that no human being would have the audacity to say something so blatantly imbecilic. I must be dreaming, right? I mean, no, Dustin from Stranger Things isn't showing me Magic the Gathering cards featuring old men's ball sacks and asking me if I can get Paul's ego to unblock him from Twitter. So I guess this isn't a dream. Maybe I'm hallucinating? No, those mushrooms, they would have worn off hours ago. It must be early onset dementia or schizophrenia or, or something i must have i must have slipped into a parallel dimension maybe that's too far fetched it's probably just like a like a typo right what uh, christians are sick of be i mean no it doesn't seem like it's a typo maybe it's a parody maybe it's a sick joke there has to be some kind of explanation for this shit right and yet there isn't. <laughs> this is a real article written by a human being named Sophia A. Nelson. Like, who the hell is that? Can we look this up? Who the fuck? Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. It makes perfect sense now. Looking at her, I'm actually reminded of a line from um, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, when he describes the eyes of the raven. I'll modify it uh, for gender, but um, otherwise I'm going to keep it the same. Uh, <laughs> let me... Can I get the voice mod on here? How do we do that? Yeah, voice mod. Deep voice. And her eyes have all the seeming of a demon. That is dreaming, and the lamplight over her streaming throws her shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe a little over the top. I don't know. We'll see. Um,. The article itself is honestly barely worth commentary. Um, it's uh, the same old song and dance you've probably heard from the Christo-fascist forever. By the way, loving the, the term Christo-fascist is, uh, is in circulation these days. Very useful. Uh, America is a nation founded on Judeo-Christian values, the article um, argues. Uh, they say this, you know, so often that you you start to think, like, maybe uh, they're trying to convince themselves more than they're even trying to convince me. Like, their evidence is, in God we trust is on our money. Oh, wow. Wow, it is? Well, you know, it wasn't added to the paper currency until 1957, right? Which was just our way of, like, trying to trigger the godless commies over there in the USSR. Uh, in 1956, Congress adopted In God We Trust as the official motto of the United States. But prior to that, the unofficial motto was E Pluribus Unum, which is uh, Latin for out of many, one, which is a way better motto, in my opinion, mostly because it actually fucking means something. Like In God We Trust did not appear on any currency in the United States until 1864. It was the two cent piece by which time the last of the remaining founding fathers was already dead for 28 years. So it's not like you can really say like, oh, that's proof that we were founded as a Christian nation. You, can't, you cannot cite something as proof of 
the foundations of the country when it didn't happen until freaking like almost a hundred years afterwards. You know what I mean? Like there's, <laughs> we were founded in 1776. We didn't put in God we trust on the currency till 1864. Seems like there's a little bit of a freaking time gap there. Other supporting evidence you can find in this article is that um, as a Christian nation, we include words from scripture um, are inscribed on Congress, whatever the fuck that means. Congress is not a building. Uh, they're also inscribed on the U.S. Supreme Court building. The Supreme Court building was built in 1935, you fucking moron. And while it does contain some depictions of Moses holding the Ten Commandments, he's depicted alongside Confucius and Salon, two other lawgivers. The motif is... This is a law building. Here are some famous lawgivers. Like, it's not like uh, it's meant to just be like Moses, the ultimate authority. Like, for fuck's sake, there's a depiction of Muhammad in the Supreme Court. This was before Draw Muhammad Day. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't trying to trigger Muslims with that. They were like, you know, just insensitive. So they're like, yeah, here you go. Muhammad, we threw him on there too. <laughs> Muslims like, we actually don't like that. It's like, yeah, hey, you love it. You love it. You'll learn to love it. <laughs> um, even if the depiction of Moses were was like meant to glorify him above all other lawmakers, which they weren't, and you can go look at quotes from the literal sculptor saying that they weren't, uh, the building was, was still created in 1935, so the country was pretty well and truly founded by then. You know what I mean? Uh, so... This is not to say, by the way, that you cannot find the odd Bible verse or piece of Christian symbolism in Washington, D.C., okay? You can. There are references to the God and the Bible thrown around here and there, but so what? So what? I use Bible quotes in my videos sometimes, and I'm an atheist. Acknowledging the Bible's literary qualities by quoting a verse from it doesn't make a person a Christian, so why would it make a nation Christian? Yeah, I mean, like, they knew the Bible. It was a really popular book. It still is. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. It's kind of like the bestseller of all time. Doesn't make it true, but it does mean that a lot of people have read it. And even if they haven't read the whole thing, they probably know a verse or two. Uh, many of the founding fathers actually have quotes that you can be, attribute to them that are pretty skeptical of religion and highly critical of the idea that religion has a place in American government. I'm going to read you a few right now. The Bible, a history of wickedness that has served to corrupt and brutalize mankind. That sounds like something I would say, but it wasn't said by me. It was said by Thomas Paine. Religious bondage shackles and debilitates the mind and unfits it for every noble enterprise. During almost 15 centuries has the legal establishment of Christianity been on trial. What have been its fruits, more or less, in all places, pride and indolence in the clergy, ignorance and servility in the laity, in both superstition, bigotry, and persecution? That's James Madison. The United States of America should have a foundation free from the influence of clergy. That's George Washington. Christianity neither is nor ever was part of the common law. That's Thomas Jefferson. But hey, you can't boil any of these guys down to a pithy quote. The founding fathers were not all-knowing beings of infinite wisdom. In fact, we should probably do away with the term founding fathers uh, in general because it's uh, kind of creepy kind of Orwellian in my opinion. They were human beings, which means they were complicated, which means they were flawed, and in many cases, deeply so, which means their legacies are complicated and troublesome and difficult. And anyone who tries to make them simple to serve this or that modern agenda is probably a fool and at the very least a charlatan. But here's what's clear to me. America was never intended as a Christian nation it's a nation wherein many people are Christian, but the chasm between Christian nation and nation where people are Christian is a very freaking big one, okay? There's a giant chasm between those two things, a giant gaping abyss, much like the, uh, the horrible you know, <laughs> dimension of torture and, uh, and malignancy that exists where, um, where Sophia A. Nelson's soul should be. Um, 
make no mistake, articles like like um like this piece of trash right here, uh, written by Karen Carrington of Karenville, Karenvania, is uh, these are not an attempt to convince you that we ever were a Christian nation. All right, there's 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 no honesty in those arguments. They're completely and utterly ridiculous. And anybody who did even like the slightest little tiny bit of due diligence would dismiss them you know, completely off. Like, it's very clear. Like, you have George Washington and Thomas Jefferson being like, nope, we're not a Christian nation. I think what they're really saying is we're a Christian nation. No, they're not that stupid, okay? They're, they're not that stupid. They are stupid, but they're not that stupid. What this is is not an attempt to convince you we were a Christian nation. It's an attempt to manifest a new Christian nation on the ashes of this once mighty constitutional republic. Who can blame her for doing it, by the way? She sees the writing on the wall, just like many of us do. America is dead, so what will come next? In her view, it should be a theocracy where you and I... Wait, how'd that go? You, I, I, you, what? We're, which one of us is which again? Where you and I... You know, I'm just, I'm just making a point. There's no difference between us, you know? We're all one. E pluribus unum, y'all. <laughs> she wants it to be a, a, a theocracy where you and I are marginalized at best. In my view, we can strive for something greater than that, folks. You know, humanity deserves better. We need to hear that, by the way, because so many of us are misanthropic, and I am too. I get it. I get being disgusted with this species, but like, the reason we're horrible is because we've suffered for so long. We've suffered enough. We have bowed and groveled and sublimated our spirits long enough. We have been captive and prisoner to these, these disgusting ideologies for long enough. It's time to end the cycle, not begin it anew, not re- Oh, we need to build a theocracy. No, we don't. We need to reject theocracy. We need to reject religion. We need to dismantle our gods, whatever they may be. Because where we're going, we're not going to need them.